The music of Carole King is a staple in my household and in my musical repertoire. You've Got a Friend was the first song I ever played with my twins. Tapestry is one of the few albums that made it from my vinyl collection to my CD to my iPod. And King herself has been an inspiration as she has forged a lasting and profound career in an industry where singer-songwriters are almost extinct and women make up far too few of their numbers. So I'm pleased to see the Broadway show Beautiful, a musical using Miss King's songs to tell the story of her life, land in Las Vegas with a run at the Smith Center through October 2nd. Today we're talking to two of the actors from that cast. Julia Nitell plays Carol, a role which she took over on Broadway, and Suzanne Grodner plays Jeannie, her mother. And both of you, welcome to the program. Thank you for having us. Yes, thanks for having us. So, Julia, when did you start playing Carol on Broadway? You had another role first, and then I, you moved into this role. Yes, I've actually, this is the first time I've really taken over the role. Okay. I've done it for vacations, and I've, I was understudying the role, and I'm um, playing her best friend, Betty, which is a very fun little role in the show. And um, not until last week did I have a full full takeover <laughs> so it's for the first time it's mine out here and you and you just came from new york yes jesse mueller who's a chicago actor yes uh wanted tony for her portrayal what did you learn from watching her i i actually saw jesse do the show when i found out i was being i was auditioning for carol instead of just the ensemble track and um I took myself to the show and I sat there and I wept for two and a half hours because she was so brilliant. And, um, you know, a year or so later, I was walking her footsteps in those costumes with that wig on. And I was like, I do not know how I got here, but I am so incredibly lucky. (laughs) It's not every day when you get to to emulate something that special. So this show is immensely popular, but Mm. the reviews or... Ben Brantley's review, actually, um, wasn't really positive. He did write, however, about the transformation from of Carol King from a young teenager mm-hmm. to a mature woman and how hard and subtle that was to play. How do you tackle this? It's really hard. It's one of those things where every single night you have to sort of wipe the slate clean and really start from a very young, innocent bright-eyed and bushy-tailed place and end up someone who has seen it and has felt pain. And, um, you know, I'm lucky because I have incredible actors around me to to get me through that and to walk with me down the path every night. But really my favorite thing is that Carol talks about how, in her book, she talks about how she feels like every single thing that happened to her in her life only made her a better storyteller Mm. and a better person and she was able to say you know this really terrible thing happened to me but it also happens to so many of you and now I can tell your story because it's a part of me and it sort of makes it easier every night. Okay so you went to see Jesse Mueller perform yes and you read Carol King's book what else Mm -hmm. did you do to prepare for this? Did a lot of listening to her to her music which was easy to do and uh, you know they, they don't want us to do an impersonation of her vocally, but her her voice is so ingrained in in everyone's DNA at this point. So there's a there's a fine line between finding ways to to hint at her and really try to embody her as much as you can while still having your own voice and you know staying healthy and doing it eight times a week. Right, and you play the piano. Yes, yeah. How long have you been playing the piano? Well, my parents are both musicians, and I just grew up with music all around. Um, In a way, this is a story about the empowerment of women in the late 20th century through one woman's journey. Mm -hmm. Do you you play that, or is that you just kind of let that be? It's funny because um, I don't think you can play it. I think it's so there, and it plays itself, and it's sort of a thing to to keep in mind and to to let sort of be an undercurrent in the story. But, you know, when Carol was going through all of this, she didn't know that she was at the at the mm-hmm. forefront of a movement like that. You know, she had no idea. She was just writing her songs and playing music with her friends and raising her children. And she didn't know how influential she was and would be. 
as most women don't. We're talking about the musical <laughs> Beautiful, about the life of singer-songwriter Carol King. It's running at the Smith Center through October 2nd. Suzanne Grodner, you swung in and out of the Broadway cast also. I did. Uh, and then you've been on the road how long now? We, uh, we've been on the road for a whole year. We finished our first year in San Francisco. We had six weeks there. And uh, t- last night kicked off our second year. So we're, um, I've signed on for another year. And uh, we're going to take the journey together with Julia uh, on board and a, a few new uh, people who came to join us for the second year. And uh, I couldn't be more thrilled mm-hmm. to have this girl uh, to play with on stage every night. We actually worked together on Broadway about how many years ago, Julia? I was 16. So She was 16. Quite I'm a not going to tell you how old I was. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> How old are you now? 20? I'm, I'm 23. 23. Yeah. Okay. So, but, but that's a week ago. We did Bye Bye Birdie together at the Sondheim, the exact mm-hmm. same theater. We kicked mm-hmm. off the Sondheim um, when, it, when it reopened, and uh, Bye Bye Birdie was the first show to go in there. So she was one of the kids in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, here we are working together again, and I couldn't be happier. Yeah. So you play Jeannie. Tell us who Jeannie is in the show. Jeannie is Carol's mom. Uh, she is divorced. And um, uh, at the top of the show, you you meet her, and she's uh, raising Carol pretty much on her own. Uh, she's a huge supporter of her music, and yet she knows that this path that uh, Carol's about to go down is a going to be a really hard path because there were there were no women uh, composers or lyricists at that time. It just wasn't a part of um, that business. It was ma- male dominated, and then uh, Don Kirshner came in and and helped Carol break through that ceiling. And so, uh, in once in on one hand, you have. Uh, mom saying to her, I do not want you going into this business. It's too hard. You should take a different path with your music or become a teacher. And uh, Mm. on the other hand, she's saying, I believe in you. I know that you are destined to do this. And, And in the end, she says go and uh, do your best. And she actually becomes her biggest mm-hmm. cheerleader and biggest fan. And in, in, in real life with Carol, that's what she says uh, about her mother. Uh, her mother was a concert pianist, and music was a part of Carol's life from a very young age. She grew up sitting at the piano learning how to play music. So her mother was very influential in her becoming a musician, even though she knew that it was going to be a rough road. Rough road, life on the road. You've been. You're now starting your second year. Yeah. Um, you've got to actually maintain a personal life. Yeah. You you have a home somewhere. I have a home in New York. Been there for thirty years, and um, Steve is holding down the fort. Hmm. But he comes out to me uh, as much as he possibly can. Life on the road is has been wonderful and very challenging. The the easy part is being on stage. Mm-hmm. That's that's a constant. Um, there's a consistency there. There's a routine. We have our family. We have our sound checks and and our shows every night. We have eight shows a week. The hard part is the the traveling and being in a different city, in a different uh, hotel room or or um, cottage or wherever we can find to live and transportation flying everywhere keeping ourselves healthy being able to exercise and all that but uh i'm loving it i didn't mm-hmm. know if i it took a took a couple of months to get used to it but i am loving being on the road and i signed on for another year and i'm looking forward to it so um this show uses the music of carol king usually in musical theater the music advances the story mm-hmm. Does this music advance the story? Of course it does, okay. because every song is written, if not immediately before it's sung. It, it's so they're so important to the plot, and they 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 move it forward in the sense that you know exactly why somebody just wrote this song, and to be able to go, oh my gosh, Cynthia Weil and Barry Mann, for instance, meet have a weird sort of connection and chemistry, and then write, he's sure the boy I love. And the words are, you know, I always dreamed the boy I love would come along and he'd be tall and handsome, big and strong, but 
that boy has come to me and he sure ain't the way I thought he'd be. And then they have this blossoming love story right. for the next two It acts. is. It's such a reflection on what's so, going on on stage. Yeah. And then, of course, you get to, to the, the tapestry album that mm-hmm. that comes towards, towards the end of the show in the second act. And what you see on stage with the relationship she has with her husband, with Jerry Goffin, um, uh, she writes about that. That's what the whole tapestry album is about mm-hmm. yeah. is the, is that relationship. And, uh, for the first time she decides to sing her own music. So you, you, the whole first part of the, of the show is, is her becoming a musician. And then you see, uh, what comes to fruition with um, uh, her becoming Carol King, the Carol King that everybody that everybody knows and loves. And in a sense, the payoff is greater because everybody fell in love with Tapestry on its own and and had their own meaning for all of the songs. And now you have a whole fresh perspective, and and you know that these songs stemmed out of a really tough time in somebody somebody's life that we all love so much. Did you listen to Tapestry when you were growing up? Yes, I have wonderful parents who. <laughs> fed me on James Taylor and the Beatles and John Denver and Carole King. And so yeah. me too. <laughs> I'm very uh, lucky. Suzanne, I, I want to go off of this for a second. I, I noticed in your bio that you on on Broadway were on the Rose Tattoo. I which was is many one years of my ago. favorite oh, one of my two. plays. Yeah, it was done. <clears throat> it was done at Circle in the Square with um, uh, Anthony LaPaglia and Mercedes Rule. And um, and Bob Falls directed this. Bob Falls from Chicago. I know you're a Chicago right. lady. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bob Falls came and directed the show. He was a fascinating man and wonderful director. So inspiring. And it was my first Broadway show. Mm. I was one of the Italian women, and then I understudied Mercedes. Uh, and she was a powerhouse to watch every night. So the, the part of the reason I bring this up is because Williams... D- writes a lot, wrote a lot about women trapped in their societal expectations. Absolutely. And in many ways, this is what this story is about. Carol oh, yeah. King is a, is a woman who grew up in the 50s, and, um, and then the world changes around her, and her music kind of helps that change. Yeah. So do, are there similarities between those two stories? Oh, I believe so. I, I think Williams... Um, was one of the first uh, to really delve into women um, of that era and their plight and um, and lift them and tell their story, which is what he did with Serafina mm-hmm. in the Rose Tattoo and, and uh, um, Glass Menagerie, you've got it, and... Um, uh, not of the iguana. He he took he he really loved writing about women, and I I think um, uh, Doug McGrath did such a great job writing the book for uh, beautiful. He interviewed he interviewed Carol, all four of them, and really delve into the, what women go were going through. Actually, at the same time that Tennessee Williams was writing all of those masterpieces, and um, I think he really captured what it was like for a woman in that uh, society uh, being in the creative arts and being a musician. Um, he was, I think he was able to really capture her voice and put it on stage. You, how long have you been an actor? When was your first professional gig? Uh, wow. I got my equity card in 1983 at my graduate school at the Oslo in Florida. Probably before you were born, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and you, and you, Julia, you've been an actor since you were a kid. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was actually, my parents are both performers, um, not professionally anymore. They're teachers, but I think I did my first professional show at four. I played Kim Ravenel in uh, Showboat beneath my parents and uh, fell asleep on stage one night, mm. which, <laughs> so that's my greatest achievement thus far. But um, <laughs> no, I did, I did uh, no professional work. Until I was 16, and I think that was the best thing because by then I was almost an adult and and could go in mature enough to handle it. And so I've really been trying to work ever since. (laughs) So what advice do you give to people who want to do what you do, who want to live a life in the theater? Both of you. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> I would say when when I talk to young performers who are about to go into the business, I one of the things I say to them is carve your own path. 
don't look at what somebody else's journey was and mm-hmm. try and match that because the thing that's going to be successful for you is you finding who you are and what is unique about you as a performer. Yeah. Your What is your voice and what do you have to contribute of your life to tell the stories that you want to tell on stage or with your music or through your dance? Find your own path and you can't go wrong um, if you if you really find out who you are and want to give that to your audiences. That's such good advice. And I think part two of that is once you get there, once you get to the show, to the job, to the rehearsal room, where wherever you find yourself, be kind and be easy to work with and make people smile yes. and do things that are unexpected and make friends and just be kind because people remember it. We've been talking to Julia Nitel, who plays Carol King, and Suzanne Grodner, who plays her mother, Jeannie, in the uh, Smith Center production of Beautiful, which runs through October 2nd. We will have links to this at KNPR.org. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.